Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda, and these are my co-stars for the day. This is Pino, Pina, Pinapole, and Spike. He's kind of like the Rob of the Kardashians. I'm sure if you've been with us for a while at How to Cake It, you remember that a year ago, I made a watermelon cake. And you guys have really been requesting that I make another fruit. They all wanted pineapples, guys. Oh. We should really get started with the episode and how I recreated you into a cake. But first, are you guys comfortable? Do you want a drink? Do you want like some simple syrup? Do you do you want some watermelon juice? I can I can cut up a watermelon. I think I have some watermelons lying around in here. Something refreshing? No, we're good. Okay, we're gonna get started. To make my pineapple cake, I made eight pounds of my ultimate vanilla cake recipe and dyed it a great yellow, like a ripe pineapple yellow. All of my cakes are out of their pans. I'm going to level off the top and cut the caramelization away from the bottom. I divide some of that batter between six six inch round pans and then I take the remaining batter and deepen the yellow. I'm gonna bake this batter in a six inch square pan and it will become the core of the pineapple. You guys have a great core. It's all about the core, working the core. You guys have it. Oh, um, I guess I should introduce you all. Uh, guys, that's Walter. And he actually brought his wife, Melanie. But let's just, this is about us. We're gonna keep this moving. It's a new year, a new fruit. Just pretend they're not. The next step is to take a circle cutter and cut a circle from the center of all of my round cakes. I used a ruler to help me make sure that all of those holes are in the same spot. Now I'm gonna use the same circle cutter and cut cake holes from my square darker yellow cake to fill the chamber. It's a cake chamber filled with cake. This is the first I time. I don't think done I've that. done that. No. Yes. And then Sir Squeeze a lot over here helped me shower them. But not just with regular old simple syrup. Oh no, oh no. I made pineapple simple syrup. I am impressed with the flavor. It's so delicious. Wait till you taste it. Or is that weird? Speaking of Sir Sweezelot, he's on sale at howtokickit.com for 15% off from July 26th to 31st. Walter, I want you to know I named the sale in honor of you because Melanie made it. And no, Melanie, stop trying to negotiate for a royalty. Yeah, she is seating. I took some of my Italian meringue buttercream and mixed it with pineapple jam. It's a really nice jam. It has some chunks of pineapple. And then on top of that, I dyed it yellow to match the cake. Because you guys are so fun and bright on the inside. That's what's great about pineapples. They're beautiful on the outside and beautiful on the inside. You know what I mean? No seeds getting in the way there. Yellow's my favorite color, by the way. I mean, pink is so 2015. Well, not this shade. And besides, I'm painting it yellow next week. We are? Y yes, Jocelyn, we are. Oh. It's time to fill and stack my pineapple cake. I'm going to layer all six layers of cake sandwiched with my pineapple buttercream. Now I'm gonna chill my tall yellow cake to set the buttercream before carving it. Once my buttercream was nice and firm, I carved my cake into a pineapple shape. I just sort of, you know, I just rounded out the top and rounded out the bottom. Be careful not to round out the bottom too much. Because there's no support, this cake is just gonna start to sink a little with the weight of the fondant and all that delicious yellow goodness. I used a small, sharp serrated knife. It's actually just a steak knife, but I love the way it works. And I made sure to remove all the caramelization from the outer edges while carving. This way, when I cut into the pineapple, you're just gonna see this yellow slice revealed. No brown lines anywhere to distract you from the full vision. I want to crumb coat this cake in yellow buttercream as well, but I don't want the gorgeous pineapple chunks of the jam in my crumb coat. So I mix a little more yellow buttercream to crumb coat my cakes. And then, oh, it's time for the dance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> This 
This party just got wild. <laughs> Pino is actually part of the witness protection program. Okay, Pino, I'm so sorry. Pineapples are so much fun. Are we going out later? Okay, good. <laughs> no, Melanie, you're not invited. Once my crumb coat is completely chilled, I ice it again with my plain yellow buttercream and let it chill once again. It's time to cover this cake and I'm gonna begin by covering it in a thin layer of yellow fondant. I measured the circumference of my pineapple cake and the height of it and then I rolled out a long piece of yellow fondant and wrapped it around the pineapple. I cut a clean seam where it met at the back I trimmed away any excess from the bottom and I also gathered the fondant on the top and trimmed away the excess and smoothed it out. You guys ask me all the time about fondant and refrigerators and how they go together. I talk about it a lot in Cake Talk. It's one of my top questions. So check out some of those videos and I'll also leave some more information in the description below. My second layer of fondant is where all of the texture is coming into this pineapple. I ordered a custom mold from pristinesmolds.ca. Shout out to a fellow Canadian. I divided my yellow fondant into four ounce portions because I wanted to make sure that as I was rolling it into my mold, I would always get the same thickness and texture. Thank you, Jocelyn. <laughs> You know, I was thinking of becoming a cake decorator. What do you guys think? You should. Yeah? Leave a comment below if you agree. You know, Jocelyn, I really think you should be a producer. <laughs> we should, I should. And Sasha, you should definitely be a shooter. I think we're onto something. We're onto something. You guys should just be pineapples because you're <laughs> great the way that you are. After I've made a few of these textured pieces of fondant, I use an X-Acto knife to sort of cut around the pattern. I don't even, I'm sorry guys, I'm like pointing at you, I'm poking you, I don't know what these are actually called. And I'm kind of creating puzzle pieces that I can then join together on my cake. To apply these textured pieces to my cake, I used a little bit of water brushed onto my cake because water sticks fondant to fondant. That's why I chose to apply that first layer of fondant. I knew it would make my life easier and I knew if it became hard to fit them together, I could simply peel it away less messy than buttercream. I keep building up my pineapple by making more textured pieces of fondant in my pineapple mold, cutting around with an X-Acto knife and joining them together as best I could. I really hope I did a great job. I mean, you guys are so complex. Now that I'm done assembling the pineapple puzzle, I'm going to chill my cake once again and prepare all of my beautiful color dusts. That's right. You're gonna get in the makeup chair now. You know, last year when I was getting ready to paint my watermelon cake. I was so nervous. At Camp Cake this past weekend, we made watermelon slices and together we painted watermelon skin. I just wanna say thank you so much to everyone who joined and signed up for Camp Cake. Baking with you guys was so much fun. If you think we should do Camp Cake again so that you can bake with me in real time, please let me know in the comments below. Tell me what you thought. Tell me if you had a good time. Tell me if you think I should invite Walter back. Or should we invite the pineapple family. Dry painting just means that I'm not gonna mix my color dust, or sometimes called petal dust, with any alcohol. I'm going to use it as a dry powder. The first thing I did is use some green color dust, and I painted all around the perimeter of each one of these little pineapple diamonds. I was going for the look of Pinapoli skin. You have, you are flawless. I really wanted a green pineapple on the outside so that when we cut inside and revealed our yellow cake, that pineapple would just shine and we would see, well, how complex you all are. Then I took some nice bright yellow color dust and painted the inside of each one of those diamonds. The next thing I'm gonna do is use a softer yellow color dust and I'm gonna brush it all over the pineapple just to sort of mellow it out a bit. Pineapples are mellow, right? They you guys see them. Spike, I want to talk to you for a minute. Are you named after like the spikes? Oh, sorry, did that hurt? To make the spikes on my pineapple cake, I used some of my leftover yellow fondant mixed with some green gum paste and made 50-50. Then I rolled out my 50-50 mixture nice and thin and used a calyx cutter to cut out the shape. I'm gonna cut off the two bottom petals and I'm gonna pinch the top one. Now I'm gonna take these little pieces and glue them to my pineapple cake one by one <laughs> with the pinched piece facing up to create the spike. 
and I'll just cut off any excess of the other two little petals that might go over into the next pineapple diamond. So what I did is I painted the bottom of the spike, the same green that I painted the pineapple, and then the little spike, I painted a mixture of ivory and yellow color dust. And when I say I added them one by one, I mean one by one. And for a closer look of how long one by one takes, you can head over to my Facebook page and check out my time lapse of this pineapple cake. I just kept making more spikes. And then you know what I did? I made more spikes. And then I thought, this pineapple needs more spikes. Just when I thought I was done with spikes, I moved on to these spikes. This top hat, by the way, you like, you rock it. To recreate the pineapple leaves, I'm gonna use green gum paste. But because the pineapple leaves sit upright, I need to insert some floral wire to help them stay that way. This way, I don't have to worry about puncturing the leaf with the wire, and I can just cut out the shape of my leaf around the wire. I'm sorry, Pinapole, I know it hurt. I just, I, I wanted it to be realistic. And then I cut out leaves one by one. Back to the one by one. One by one. Now, the tricky thing about a pineapple is not only do the leaves sit upright, but they bend outward from the top. So when I make my leaves, I have to make sure to dry them in that shape. And I'm gonna do so upside down. Because if I try to dry them like this, well, they're just gonna peel away from whatever I stick them to. So I found a vase and a wine bottle. Make sure to grease it well with shortening so that you can get your leaves off. In order to dry the leaves on a bottle, I inserted the extra wire down into the masking tape to keep it stable. And then I just sort of lightly press my leaves onto the bottle, letting them follow the curve. I also made some smaller leaves by cutting out some little leaves and drying them around a fondant rolling pin. So I had a nice little curly leaf. And those I'm gonna use at the base. Once they're dry, remove your gum paste leaves very carefully from all of the drying apparatus. I painted the top of the leaf with some green color dust, and then I painted the bottom with ivory. Because, actually I've been meaning to ask you guys a question, Sasha was wondering too. Why, what is this pineapple dust? Maybe they're really old. She, no, she didn't. Yes, she did. I used a circle cutter to mark a nice circle in the center of the top of my pineapple as a guide. And then I began to insert the leaves. I started by placing the biggest leaves in a circle formation on top of the pineapple. And I also placed a ball of yellow fondant in between to give them something to stick to and use royal icing as glue. I went one step further and I tied a thin ribbon around the entire ring of leaves. Then I added smaller leaves to the inside of that ring of leaves. And then I added some more smaller leaves to the outside of the ring of leaves, again, using royal icing as glue. I decided I need a few tiny leaves right at the very base of the ponytail. So I rolled out more gum paste, cut tiny leaves, and painted this gum paste while it was still not dry. And then I just curled it and added it right to the base here and there, wherever I felt it needed it. So is this it? This is it! Well, no, I have to eat it. This is where it sometimes gets awkward on how to cake it, because I never know how the models are gonna feel when I cut into the cake. Was it weird for you? How was it for you? I mean, it wasn't weird for me, it was delicious. Be honest, I want like honest feedback. I didn't ask you guys. You know, Walter, back when I worked with you last year, you were so difficult to work with. And quite frankly, you were lazy. And now that our channel has hit two million, that's actually true. But we are close and we are gonna get to two million. Can you guys help me please? Subscribe. One, two, three. Smile! Say pineapple! I will be back to join you next Tuesday with another cake. She's not even juicy. Yolanda! I haven't seen Melanie anywhere. Guys?